In a sea of complex games, Avalon Hill came out with a fun little card game that offered a mix of strategy, skill, and luck, although not much realism. Naval War is a neat little card game, and we will teach you how to play it in a few minutes here on Legendary Tactics. Naval War is a game for three to nine players where each player controls a group of ships called a task force, and the goal is to sink the ships of the other players. The game can be won by scoring 100 points or any other target score that is agreed upon beforehand. There are two decks in this game. One is the ship deck, which consists of 54 cards, and the other is the play deck, which has 108 cards. Decide who the dealer should be. After the first round, the dealer is always the player who has the highest point total. Shuffle both decks and deal each player five cards from each deck unless you're playing a nine player game where only four cards are dealt. Place the remaining ship cards face down on the table. This becomes the harbor pile. The remaining play cards become the draw pile and are placed next to the harbor pile. Each player arranges their ship cards face up in columns according to the gun size indicated. Aircraft carriers are placed in the rear of the task force and may not be fired upon by other players until all other ships have been sunk. The dealer starts by using all the red special play cards that can be used, if any, and drawing replacement cards to fill up the hand of play cards to five, or four if there are nine players. Any additional damage cards are simply discarded at this point. Continue around the table until all special play cards have been used. At this stage in the game, no more than one minefield card may be placed in front of a player's task force. The dealer begins normal play by drawing one card from the draw pile and either playing it, playing another card from hand, or discarding a card to the discard pile. Players can never draw cards from the discard pile. Play continues clockwise around the table. If a special playing card is drawn, it must be played at once and it counts as that player's one draw and one card play for the turn. Let's first take a look at the cards, beginning with the special action cards. First, we have minefield cards. These are placed in front of any player's task force, and each minefield counts as one or two hits on every ship in that task force, according to the value on the card. And this includes any ships added to the task force after the minefield card is played. Any ships that are sunk by mines are awarded to that player playing the last minefield on the victim. Minefields remain in place through the game unless the Minesweeper card is played. Next we have Submarine cards. These are immediately placed on top of any enemy ship. Roll a six-sided die. If a five or six is rolled, that ship is automatically sunk. If another number is rolled, there is no effect. Either way, discard the Submarine card after use. Then we have the Torpedo Boat cards. These are played exactly the same way as the submarine cards except that the target ship is only sunk on a roll of 6. Additional damage cards can be placed on any salvo card already played on an enemy ship, representing secondary explosions. They can only be placed on ships that have already suffered a salvo card and they add 1 or 2 hits of damage. If it causes the ship to sink, it is awarded to the player that placed the additional damage card, not to the player who fired the salvo. Additional ship cards are discarded immediately and allow the player to draw a card from the harbor pile. This ship is added to the player's task force immediately. If there is a special play card that cannot be played immediately, always discard it right away. Normal play cards can be held in a player's hand for any length of time. These cards are as follows. Salvo cards have a gun size requirement and a damage value. These can be fired if the owning player has a ship in their task force with the corresponding gun size. For example, the hood can fire any 15-inch salvo card, but it cannot fire any other sized salvo card. To fire a salvo, place it under any enemy ship that is not screened or obscured by smoke. Apply the number of hits on the salvo card as damage to the target. Additional salvos fired at that ship are placed under it, making sure that the damage value of all salvo cards are visible. Minesweeper cards, when played, remove all minefields from in front of the player's task force. It is discarded along with the minefield cards and can't be reused. 
The repair card can remove any one salvo card, plus any additional damage cards that may have been placed on it. Discard the repair card as well as the damage and salvo cards after use. The Destroyer Squadron card is kind of interesting, and potentially deadly. This card is placed in the center of the table face up. Each of the other players may optionally fire on the Destroyer Squadron card. Four hits are required to destroy it, and submarines, torpedo boats, the other Destroyer Squadron card, mines, additional damage, and airstrikes may not be used against this card. If it is sunk, the Destroyer Squadron card is discarded and counts no points for anyone. If it has not been sunk by the playing player's next turn, and as long as that player still has ships left in their task force, the destroyer squadron carries out an attack. If the playing player has their last ship sunk before the turn gets to them, the destroyer squadron is discarded and makes no attack. The player who played the destroyer squadron simply announces which task force is the target and rolls one die. That number rolled is the number of ships sunk, which is selected by the owner of the Destroyer Squadron card. After this, the Destroyer Squadron card is discarded. Smoke cards may be placed in front of the owner's task force, making it immune to any attacks except for the submarine and additional damage cards. Smoke cards stick around until the owner's next turn and are discarded before drawing a card for the turn. Aircraft carriers can be used for airstrikes. If a player owns an aircraft carrier, they can perform an airstrike. This action would be in place of a normal draw and discard sequence. Each carrier can be used against the same ship or different ones, but the airstrikes must be declared before any rolls are made. Announce a target and roll the six-sided die. If a one is rolled, the target is sunk. Any other number has no effect. So how does one sink another ship? either through a successful airstrike, submarine, destroyer squadron, or torpedo boat attack, or by an accumulation of damage points equal to or exceeding a ship's hit number, which is shown on the card here. The player who sinks the ship by placing the card that finished the job places it in a pile called the Deep Six Pile. Any salvo and damage cards are discarded. If a player ever has all ships in their task force sunk, that player is eliminated from the round and must discard any remaining play cards, but they need not be shown to other players. Please note that a player can never take an action that will sink or damage one of their own ships. The game ends when all but one player is eliminated, or when the last card is drawn from the draw pile. The player that draws the last card from the draw pile may complete that turn. When the round ends, all players add up the hit numbers of the ships in their deep six piles, and add that number to their score. In addition, if all but one player was eliminated, the remaining player is awarded 10 bonus points. Each player eliminated on any round is penalized 10 points that round by deducting it from their score. Negative scores are possible, though obviously undesirable. After a few rounds are played, once one player reaches 100 points, that player wins. If more than one player exceeds 100 points in the same round, then the player with the highest score among them wins the game. If there is a tie, Play one more round to decide the winner. And that is how to play Naval War. I will just go through a quick list of variations that you can apply to add further interest to the game. Number one, if you want a longer game, raise the total points required to more than 100. Number two, if you want shorter rounds, remove all additional ship cards from the deck. Number three, if you would like higher scoring rounds, increase the number of ships and play cards dealt to each player. Number four, if you just want to play a pure gunnery game, remove all special play cards, the Destroyer Squadron, Carriers, and Minesweepers. Number five, for a more realistic game, add in your own sound effects. Number six, instead of ending play upon drawing a special play card, continue to draw until a regular card is drawn, and play any special play cards that come up along the way. Number seven, for increased carnage, count all minefields as being two points. If you'd like to try simulating a night action, allow all players to deploy their ships face down. If they fire, they are exposed until one entire round takes place in which they are not fired upon. Targets are selected at random and are exposed when hit. In this variation, carriers may be hit even though other cards in their task force are still in play. Target ships remain exposed in the same way that firing ships do. Or you could just simply turn off the lights and play it that way. 
If you want to mix in kamikaze attacks, owners of Japanese carriers may do the following. Announce the target as usual, along with a hearty cry of banzai, and roll the die. Kamikaze attacks succeed on a roll of one or two. However, the number rolled for a successful attack is added to the number one, and this is the number of turns it must wait before that carrier may attempt another airstrike. Any other number rolled during the attack presumes that the planes did not find their target, and the carrier must wait one turn before attempting another kamikaze attack. And number 10. Finally, if you are playing in teams, you can try limiting table talk to people within that team. When you play with a larger number of players, you may want to play in teams. This is called a fleet arrangement. If you have an odd number of players, set up the game as a free-for-all. If you have an even number of players, you can either have a free-for-all or divide into two even teams. And of course, with nine players, you can have three teams of three if you like. I hope this video is helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching, and please take a moment, if you would, to like and share it. This is Legendary Tactics.